What's up gamers, this is Get A Whale, bringing you episode 37 of Backcap. Highlights taken from casts on TeamFortress.tv. This episode will cover everything from July the 23rd to the 30th, so let's get going. Well here we are, it's the final week of ESEA Season 22. Champ GG took on EVL Gaming and Bird Noise has played Ronin to lock in the Final Four for playoffs. ETF2L Season 24 playoffs also wrapped up this week with Nameless vs LEGO in that Grand Final. In the news this week, Crown's Esports Club sponsored a new TF2 team. Tiger posted his team's roster for I-58. View model settings for matchmaking were opened up a bit more in the latest update. Tip of the Hats 2016 was announced, and Full Tilt posted their fundraiser for I-58. Let's jump right into highlights first of all from EVL Gaming vs Champ GG. New friends still on the ground there, that's from EVL. Now we've sort of crossed over here. One player underneath maybe going up. Yeah, we're going up the drop down now, so this is going to be the break play here. They're going to try to pinch his EVL. And now the kills are coming down. This guy is already down. Tragedy to struck. That should be it. hit a bad air shot there, but it doesn't seem like it's going to work out for his team. Zilly's going to go down super late, and that's going to... Oh, he actually... Gets the Uber saw and pops Uber. That actually just delays his death as he, as he hits his kill bind. Actually on Sniper, holding down the big door all by himself, taking Sezko out on the flank, and that opens up that entire side for EVL. Yeah, and they're, they are in lobby now, too. We have two, three players now currently in lobby. But Sky still has Uber. And oh, there it anymore. goes. Point blank drop shot for Scissor. I was going to say something else, but that was inappropriate. Anyway, um, that's probably the game for AK. Scissor and Delpo going ham throughout. Delpo capping off the point with Scissor hitting two ridiculous shots to end the game. What a game for EVL, looking very dominant throughout. EVL Gaming made a statement on Gully Wash and it showed that they deserve to be in the playoffs with a 5-1 victory over Champ GG. Let's move on now, continuing our coverage of the ETF2L playoffs with Nameless versus LEGO. Make two scouts now because then you'll get like obviously the normal one one scout cap rate, mm. but it's just too risky. Oh, You're committing too much Zen. just for a point. He's peeking around this corner. He's got Raymond very low. No way! What? Unbelievable! How does he happen to do it? How are Lego doing this time and time again? Is it a problem with Raymond? Is it a problem with Perm? Was Perm even a problem in the first place? These are the questions that are racing through my mind right now. So disrespectful. We're never going to be done. in these four with that negative behaviour. <laughs> Well, oh. that is it. Lego's time to shine now. They're going to be moving in. Eyes on Uber going to be popped off straight on the way. Happy Cool is getting in a lot of denial, but already the sentry gun's been brought down. Spud, one of the last men left standing for his team. Stark also trying to take that 1v1 sword. He's getting a kill after kill. Eyes on actually going to be falling to Spud in the end. Spud picks up two more. It's Dr. Phil and Josh are going to be dying in the end. And Zen has finally got one kill on the drag. Oh, wow. but what cost? Raymond finishing him up with the saw. That's going to be 100% Uber on his side, and Spud just went huge in that situation. Actually, very passive, very malleable, ready to work off a moment's whim. Josh jumps in, not going to be getting any frags. Unfortunately, two players on each side now are going to be falling as well. Down now. However, Lego, they do have the Uber to hold on with, so I think Nameless did realize their mistake. However, they are going to be making their way in now. Drac has just been completely demolished. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness, Drac. Goodness gracious me. The Somehow, Drac attack. he gets air shot and propelled straight into the backside of Condom, dropping him in the process. It, it just boggles the mind how he can pull out these blades. Ridiculous stuff. And Nameless, Nameless, they still have the Uber. A bit of Viking-esque uh, character. It's just, no, do a, do a nice landing accent for me. Hey, <laughs> you can swear you can parry. That, that's the uh, same. Not an accent, now, that is not a great Icelandic, Icelandic speech style. Speaking of, there. no, we're not really speaking of eyes on at all, but speaking of eyes on, he's oh, moving well. in! He's got the headshot! God almighty, just when you think they need to clutch it. He pulls it out of the bag. He pulls it out of the bag. War. He pulls it out of the bag. There's he no pulls way it. around it. He, he's reached into the bag. He's, he's reached into the it bag. He's it was a rabbit. It. That was the wrong thing. He wanted to pull out a play. He did, and it's happened. Badlands was a very low scoring game with LEGO leading 1 0 for the majority of the map. Nameless tied it up with just under a minute left, though, to take map 1 to a golden cap. 
Strong play from the LEGO soldiers gave their team the victory going into map 2. Nameless blanked LEGO on Gully Wash with a clean 5-0, taking that game to a third map. Granary the decider, Nameless pulling ahead to a 2-0 lead real early. LEGO were able to get a round of their own, but were ultimately unable to convert. And Nameless took the map and the grand final, defending their position as ETF2L champions. Fresh off their victory in ETF2L, Nameless was sponsored by Crown's Esports Club, who were looking to pick up a new TF2 team after lackluster results from their previous roster. The new Crown squad will be looking to represent their sponsor well with I-50H a few weeks away. Bird Noises vs. Ronin is up next as the Feathered Friends look to take Roost in Season 22 playoffs. See, as long as he avoids some spam, he, oh my god, he's in such a great spot. Can he? Is he gonna decloak right behind Nursey? He is. Here he comes. Is he gonna get that crucial stab onto Nursey? Nursey actually pops and flashes Corsa, and Corsa's gonna pistol down Matonski. Oh my god, this is disastrous from Ronin. Yep, not only did he flash the, or not, well, excuse me, not he, but uh, not only did Nursey flash the spy, but then uh, Badonsky was killed by himself, <laughs> and that is how his pushes are broken. Second point cap, Marxist. It's unfortunate. Yeah, they ended up with the spy cap of a second. No scout to uh, put that time on there and let it work out. So just a little bit of rushed planning there. Too excited to win the dream. Corsa is still on spy. I know Ronan no they Ronan definitely knows. But Corsa, with that spy movement speed buff, can make a quick play, and here it comes, and there it is! He gets it right on to Nursey, and that opens up uh bird noises for another push with an advantage. L hard and large last. Yep, and we'll see which door they choose to go. It looks like upper right now, which doesn't have the greatest track record. And it is in now. The seventh player is a very high level, but it's discovered. Melo will die. It's already one down for the upper randos. Shotgun, there's pressure on the point, though. Nobody is really close to it. They should just step on it. There we go. Podonsky is going to try, but no. And uh, that will be a round two Ronin. All right, just checking because uh, my game is a little laggy here, so my swamp internet may be uh, struggling. Ball actually making a cheeky play near drop down, and he's gonna fight Mela. Mela trading rockets with Ball. Ball actually surviving and killing Mela, starting off the back cap. But is it gonna be enough? Everybody on Bird Noises is selling out to defend this midpoint. And it looks like they're going to be successful in blocking it, and Ball should be able to cap it off and maybe get to last. It's going to be another uh, 1v1 between Mela and Ball on this last point. Ball getting so much time on the point. Mela just spawning now, and Ball with the double back cap. It was an incredibly back and forth game on Granary. Bird Noise is fighting for a shot in playoffs. The game went the full nine rounds, with Ronan putting forth a powerful showing to close out the game and end Bird Noise's season. With all Week 9 games finished, the playoff spots are all set now. Froyo Tech taking the first one, of course, followed by Ronin and Froyo Black. EVL Gaming taking that coveted fourth spot, which left Bird Noises in fifth, and Champ GG in sixth. Simple Gaming and Sal's Canal looking at seventh and eighth, with Dead Aeonic in ninth. With such an exciting end of the season, hopefully we can see the return of invite teams which just missed out on the playoffs this season, next time around with Season 23 right around the corner. Speaking of sticking around, core players from the X-Crowns roster, Tiger, AMS, and Smear have put together a new team for I-58. They'll be joined by Shocky and Funts on Scout and Flushy on Medic. On AMS's stream, the pocket hinted at the potential Last Resort sponsor. Nothing confirmed though, as of right now. We'll keep you posted. Banny discussed the view model FOV being unlocked from 54 to 70 last week, and Valve delivered in this week's update. Though not all view models are updated yet, the change that came with the patch were either updates to the view models itself or updates to the animations. Valve also removed custom animations from the SV Pure whitelist, presumably due to a certain set of view model custom animations that emulated the effect of Draw View Model Zero. We want to note there's a myth that was going around that there was an exploit where increasing view model animation speed granted faster reloads. That myth has been debunked, however, and it's understood that weapon attributes are stored server-side, meaning that the sped-up animations do nothing. 
Moving on, the TF2 team sought to thwart Abandoners by adding longer Abandoned penalty timers for first-time Abandoners with a low number of games played, along with a more significant loss of rank compared to a normal game loss. Of course, we've only covered the most impactful changes in this patch. There's a lot more stuff we didn't go over. You can look at the description to find the full patch notes if you're interested. Hopefully the practice of frequent updates continues to improve matchmaking overall, albeit step by step. In the largest bit of community news, Tip of the Hats 2016 was announced this week. The event running from Friday the 16th to Sunday the 18th of September, featuring a star-studded cast of community members and exciting events. The event has raised, of course, over $320,000 since 2013. It is huge. And it's getting bigger every year. You're going to want to check out tipofthehats.org or the Steam Group for some more detailed information. Do it up. Full Tilt announced their fundraiser for I-58 on Friday. The team's looking to raise $2,000 in the next two weeks to cover their travel costs and computer rentals. Demo reviews, a signed mouse pad, or even an hour of anime with Salentes. Wow, are up for grabs as donation perks. So hurry up and get yours before it's too late. That's a wrap for episode 37. Thank you so much for joining us, as always. Remember to follow us on Twitter at BackCapTeam. And share this episode with a friend. Maybe they're just getting back from vacation and they've missed out on the news over the past few weeks. They can come to BackCap and catch up on all the TF2 news they have missed. I am Getaway, and I will catch you all next time on BackCap.